Hello and welcome to our first Python and Tkinter tutorial video. These first few videos are going to give you an overview of some of the very basic concepts and options that are available to us as we make our Python GUIs. I highly recommend watching these instructional videos first so you have a strong foundation as we then dive into some of the cooler projects of the course. So I've opened up a new window here uh, and I've just called it basics0 underscore windows dot py. That's going to be my naming convention. Feel free to name this file whatever it is that you'd like. Now, the f to run any tkinter or Python GUI app, it really boils down to the following four steps. First, import tkinter into your file. Second, create a main GUI window. Third, add some widgets to that window. And we'll learn about widgets like buttons, labels, and entries, etc. later on in this course. And then four, run your Windows main loop, which is like a giant while loop that'll track any events triggered by the user on one of your widget, like if like a user presses a button. So the first thing that we must do is import the tkinter library into our file. tkinter is the standard GUI library for Python, so it comes pre-installed with the base install of Python. So a simple import statement will suffice here. So I'll say import tkinter. Now we are going to end up needing to bring in more files as our apps get a little bit more complicated, and we'll talk about how we import those files um, later on. So let's see, we've imported tkinter, so now let's create our window common convention is to call the main window of your application the root window. So we're going to call, always call this, this first window the root window. To create this window, we'll call the tkinter library uh, and we'll create an instance of the tk widget. So tkinter.tk uh, and it's a capital T lowercase k here. Uh, this creates a top level widget that's going to be our root window of our application. Essentially think of it as like a giant container that we're going to put all of our other widgets into. And then we just worry about running this root widget and when we run the root widget all of the other widgets will also um, kind of be run and created. So in fact I like to put a little comment here. Let's put a comment here. We'll say define a window. Now, if I run this right now, nothing's going to happen, and let's let's talk about why, right? So if I run this, uh, the, the code ran, I didn't get an error, but nothing popped open. And the reason why is because we haven't done steps three and four uh, of, you know, the, the list that we made, right? We would have to maybe add some widgets to this window if we wanted to. We're going to not do that yet. We're going to get to that in our next video. But step four is really important. Um, we have to run the main loop of the window. So in order to do that, I'm going to put a comment here. We'll say run root window main loop. All right, I got a call root, so the name of my window is root, and I'm going to call main loop uh, on this. And this is essentially what's going to create this root window, and it's going to continually run it. Think of it as like a giant while loop, and the only way we end the while loop is maybe by um, hitting the X of the window here. So now when I open this, look at this, we get a nice little window. My window looks specific to my operating system, Windows 10. So if you're running this on, I think, maybe Mac or Linux, your window might look a little bit different. But you can see we have a nice icon. We have a title. I got the minimize, maximize buttons. So I can do that here. Ooh, I completely closed that. There we go. Um, min and max. I can, I think, resize this window. And so we get some nice options. But it looks kind of bland, right? It kind of looks like you know, just a plain window. What if we wanted to customize it? Well, don't worry, we most certainly can. So to customize this window, and so I'm going to make sure I do this above my uh, call to the main loop of the root window. We got to, that's, this should be our last line of all of our code here. Um, let's change the title first. So in order to do this, I'm going to call root dot and I'll change the title property so root dot title and inside of here I'll pass a string I'm gonna say window basics alright so if I run this now we should get a nice window with a different title and so you can see window basics perfect let's talk about how we might be able to change this icon from this like little feather to something else that we want to change the icon we're gonna uh, look at the root windows icon bitmap uh, property. Now inside here you got to pass a string which is a reference to the file name in question. So if I just open up my file explorer here um, I'm going to just go to where I have this stored code files basics. You can see here's my file basic zero underscore windows and then here's my icon file thinking. So I have them in the same directory which is exactly uh, how I'm going to do it for the rest of this course. So to access that 
that file, I just have to type in thinking, the name of the file, and then .ico. Now if you named your file something else, feel free to just type that file name in, and you can grab this ICO file uh, from the resources of this video. So I'm always going to put my icons or images that I'm using as resources uh, in our videos here. But let me show you where I get um, most of my uh, icon files from. So if I open up the web browser here, and I go to uh, icon archive, Here's where I pull up all of my uh, icons. So I think I called this thinking, right? So here it is, right? So thinking, really nice. And I can get it in different uh, file formats, uh, different sizes. And so when you're setting the icon, it has to be an ICO file. But if you're trying to just put images into your app, you can use PNGs or JPEGs. And we'll talk about how you go about doing that later on. Um, one of the things I'll note here is that if you're going to use an icon or an image uh, in maybe like a commercial application, make sure that you are allowed to do so. Um, other times, the, you know, depending on what the license is, it may say you can use it, you can't use it, you can use it, but you have to give me credit somewhere. And so you, it's, at certain points in you know this course, I might say, oh, I got this icon from this website or from this user just to give them the credit that they need. All right, perfect. So if I run this, let's just check. We set the icon, and there it is, that nice little thinking uh, face right there. Perfect. Uh, let's talk about what, how we might be able to resize the window, right? Maybe I don't like the size of that window. I want it to be a little bit different. I can do that by uh, calling the geometry property. Now, inside of here, this takes a string argument, which is the width of the window, and then x, and the height of the window. So you got to set width, x, height. So I don't know. Let's set this to be 250 by... 700. So I want like a want, uh, a thin, tall window. Ah, and look at that. There we have it. So it looks a little bit, uh, you know, just like I thought, right? Thin and tall. And you can see here, right? I can click on the edge and resize uh, in the x direction, and I can resize in the y direction. You may not want the user to be able to do that. And so we can uh, prevent them from doing that by uh, changing the resizable uh, property. So root.resizable. And inside of here, uh, this takes two Boolean values. Um, the first resizes in the x direction, and then the next resizes in the y direction. So if I set like 0, 1, 0 says don't allow for resizing in the x direction. 1 says allow for resizing in the y direction. So let's just check this, right? If I look here, I'm trying to grab, and I, it's not letting me resize in the x direction. And if I do it in the y direction, I should still be able to. And I can. And if you look here, if I hit maximize, right, it only maximizes in the y direction now. A lot of times what I like to do is I like to set the width and height of the app using the geometry property. And then I set the resizable property to 0, 0, so that they can't resize it. So now if you run this, you'll look, the this maximize button is completely, um, it, it's, it's grayed out, so we can't use it. Perfect. Lastly, uh, let's talk about a really important um, tool for us, and that is using um, dot .config. Using dot .config on a widget, we can change specific options of the widget um, by just uh, specifying what option it is that we want to change. So right here, I can call root.config, and inside of here, I can pass a, an option or a property of the widget. Uh, for instance, I'm going to change the background color, so BG, which is for our background color, and then I just specify what color I want to change it to. You can specify the color as a string, or you can use hex uh, hex values, and later on we'll start using hex values, as I think it works a little bit better. But for right now, um, there we have it, right, a nice blue window. And so you can see really quickly, um, we created a window that looked pretty pretty basic. Uh, and with a, a couple of changes, we've made the window maybe more suitable to an application that we're trying to run. So I think this looks great. Now, what if you wanted to maybe uh, create more than one window? Well, your application really should only have one root window or one instance of the TK widget. Uh, that being said, your application can have any number of what are called top-level windows. So let's talk about making a second window. Second window. In order to make a second window, um, we're going to call tkinter's top-level widget now. So I'm going to call my second window, I'll call it top, and we'll say tkinter dot, and we want to access the top-level widget, so top-level. So as soon as I run this, I should now get two windows. 
and there we have it, right? Two independent windows. Um, my first window, I've set all of those properties. The second window, I did not set all of the properties. If I close the root window, however, both close, which is really nice, which is really nice here. Um, because remember, it's the root window that's controlling the program. So we can set some of the properties of our second window here, just like we did with the first. So let's set some of those properties um, right now. Let's set uh, the title. So we'll say top.title, and I'll change this to second window. And let's change the color. So I'll do top dot config and we'll do bg equals and let's set it as a hex code right so let's do i don't know one two three four five six what's that going to look like i mean i'm really interested to see what color this is oh it's a nice like dark blue all right and you can see right we've got the title is different here second window now if you notice right it just sort of opens up um in a in a set location relative to Right, it kind of is opening up right on top of our first window. I don't like that. So we can use the geometry property, top.geometry. I'm going to specify the, the height and width. Let's make it 200 by 200. Uh, and that's like, you know, just like we did up here with the root window. But then we can uh, also specify where it is that the window is going to open up. So we can set a location, x, comma, y, with 0, 0 being the top left corner of the screen. Okay, so this is the 0, 0 position. So increasing in X and then increasing in Y going down. And so in order to do this, we just use the, a plus sign. And so I'm going to say in the X direction, let's shift it over 500. And then in the Y direction, let's shift it down 50. And this is going to open it um, so it's not right on top of our first window. And so there you can see, right, F over 500 and then down 50. Uh, really nice. Wonderful. So in this video, we made some windows for our upcoming applications. Uh, in the next few videos, we're going to learn uh, about some of the different widgets that we can place into these windows and how we can use them in our apps to make them, you know, interactable. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you in those next videos. I hope you enjoyed this first one, and I will see you soon. Hello, and welcome back. Now that we know how to open a GUI window, let's take a look at some of the various widgets we can place into our windows. Our first widget is going to be the label. A label widget is a widget that allows you to place text or images onto the screen. Um, for right now, we're only going to talk about text, and in a later video, we'll work with images. To begin, we'll create our root window kind of like we've done before. So I have a new uh, file here, and I've got this saved in the same directory uh, that we were working out of. So let me just see here if I come back. Right here is our previous file. So here's our other file. So I'm going to put all of these files in this same directory with this image right now, um, for kind of for these tutorials. So let's see. Uh, we'll, we'll put a comment here. We'll say labels and pack. So we'll talk about those. And the first thing we've got to do is we have to import tkinter. And so now let's define our window. So this is going to be a review of what we've done in the last video. So we'll call our window root, and we'll set it equal to tkinter.tk. And so that'll make a tk widget for us. Let's set the title. So we'll call the title label basics. Let's set uh, the icon, so root.icon bitmap. And be because I'm in that directory where the ICO file is, I'm just going to reference its name, thinking.ico. Um, now, let's set the window size, so root.geometry. I'm going to set it equal to, uh, we'll make a square window, so 400 by 400. I don't think I want this window to be resizable, so root.resizable. We'll give it two booleans of 0 and 0. And lastly, let's set the background color, so I'll call root.config. And I'm going to set the background property equal to blue here. Awesome. And so if we want to make sure this works, right, we're going to run the root windows main loop. So root dot main loop. So if I run this now, hopefully it'll look just like we had before. Perfect. So we've got a nice window with our icon and title. We can't resize it. And the background is blue. Very good. So if you recall, right, Step one, in our last video, we kind of introduced these steps of how do we make our application. Step one was import tkinter. Step two was make your root window. There was a step three, which was add your widgets, right? So we'll say create 
widgets. And then step four was run that main loop. So let's talk about our widgets here. Let's make our first uh, widget, our label. And remember, in this video, we're going to talk about labels. And we're going to just use text for all of our labels. So my first uh, label I'll call name label one. And I'm going to set it equal to tkinter.label. So that will make a label widget for me. Now, anytime we make a widget, we first have to pass the window or frame, and we'll talk more about what frames are later on, uh, where the widget will be placed. Right now, when I just do this, um, tkinter has no idea where this label needs to go. So I'm going to pass in my root window. So now when I do this, um, this is going to place the widget in that root window or root frame. Next, I'm going to set the text that the label will display. So I'm going to say text is equal to, um, hello, my name is Mike. Now I've created the label. Uh, if I run our window, all right, so if I run this, let's see, I've created the label. If I run this, though, uh, the label doesn't appear. This is because even though I've created it, I haven't actually placed it onto the window. So it's kind of like a two-step process, right? Create the widget and then place the widget onto the window. See, I have to tell Python where the label goes, essentially. Now, there's a couple of different ways that we can do this in tkinter. The most basic and simple is to use the pack method. This method says, um, hey, you have a widget. I'm just going to pack it into the window in the next open and available spot. So let's pack the label now. So we've created the label. And so now we're going to pack the label. So let's see. In order to do this, I'm just going to call the label name label one dot pack. And I'm just going to do that for right now. Really basic, right? So if I run this now, it looks like, hey, cool, look at that. Um, we've, we've created um, the label. Uh, it appears. That's awesome. So let's make another one. Uh, so let's make another label. So I'm going to call this name label 2. And I'm going to set it equal to tkinter.label. We're going to make a label widget. I'm going to put it in the root window. I'm going to set the text equal to, hello, my name is John. And I'm going to set some other options here while I create this. I'm going to set the font. So I can set the font equal to, it's going to be a tuple, uh, and it can take some values. I'm going to say the font family, so Arial, um, the size, I'll set it to 18, and then like the style option. So I'm going to say maybe bold here. So now I'm going to pack this onto the screen. So let's see, I'll say name label 2 dot pack. And so now when I pack this, it's going to pack it in the next available space. So it should pack it on the next line uh, moving down. Uh, and it does. Really cool, right? So it packs it down. You can see the text is different and the font is also different for this label. Okay, um, let's keep going. Let's make name label three. Let's see what happens here. So name label three. We'll set it equal to tkinter.label, and we're going to put it in the root window. And this time, let me set, I can, I can like define the text and the font just like I did here, or I can use config, right? So I could say name label uh, 3.config, and then I could set text equal to, um, let's say, uh, hello, my name is Paul. All right, and I could set the font uh, name label three dot config um, font is equal to we'll set it just this time. Let's just use a font family of Cambria and we'll set the font size equal to 10 and I'm going to leave the font option blank so I don't have to have that. And let's also change the background color this time. So I'm going to say uh, name label three dot config bg is equal to and i could specify let's set it equal to red so i could type in the the word red or i could use a hex value so hex for red is ff zero 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 so now that i have all of this here i can pack name label three 
into the root window. How does it know it needs to go into the root window? Well, when I've defined it up here, right, I've passed the root window here as a, an argument. So if I run this now, ah, look at that. It works uh, exactly the same using dot config. Um, sometimes it's nice to use the dot config method, but you know, here, I don't maybe necessarily like it. It takes up a lot of lines, so I'm just gonna set everything here. Text is equal to, hello, my name is Paul. Um, font, I'll set to Cambria and a size 10. And then my background, I'll set to the hex value FF0000. And so now I can kind of get rid of these lines here. And it should work exactly the same. Let's just check. Wonderful. Uh, works really good. So if you notice here, um, when we pack this label, it sort of just kind of goes right up to the, the label that was before it, right? It's using all of the available space. Maybe we want, we want to introduce some space or some padding around the widget. Um, we can add padding in the Y direction, the vertical padding, or in the X direction, horizontal padding. And we can do this when we call um, pack. So right here on line 20 where I'm, I'm packing my third label, name label, uh, I can add some padding. So let's add some uh, vertical padding. Let's see. So let's say pad, uh, well, let's add some X, we can add some horizontal padding. Pad X is equal to 10. And we'll add vertical padding. Pad Y is equal to 50. Now if I run this, um, we should see some space around our third widget. And if you look, hey, look at that added space, right? So here was our third widget. It's now shifted down. Uh, and in the X direction, there's nothing else on the X direction to, to space it. So really that pad X10 really doesn't do anything there. But it's nice to introduce that that's uh, uh, an option that we can set when we call pack. Uh, all right, let's do another label, right? We're learning some really nice things about labels and packs here. Um, so we're going to make another label. Uh, I'll call it name label four. And so we'll call this tkinter and we'll create a label widget. I'm going to fix it to the root window. Uh, and let's set the text equal to, oh, I don't know, hello, my name is Sue. And we'll set the background color to, um, let's set it to hex code 0000000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, and the foreground which will be FG, which is like the color of the font here. So foreground, let's set it to green. So remember, we can use hex values or we can use um, strings here for that. Um, so if I run this, oh, I got to pack it, of course, right? If I ran this now, we wouldn't see name label four because I didn't pack it to the screen. So dot pack. Um, and if I run this, there it is, right? A black font or a black background, 0000, zero, zero, zero with a green font. Looks kind of cool. Um, let's let's mess around with this one um, with the pack here. Um, so let's see. Uh, when we pack, we can add our padding, right? And so if I want to add some vertical padding, let's just say pad Y is equal to um, like 10, right? So if I run this, this adds 10 extra padding on the bottom. Remember, this widget here had 50 vertical padding on the top and bottom, and then we're adding another 10 here. So really, it's like it's getting 60 uh, pad, uh, padding in the vertical direction. If we only want to pad maybe to one side, like the bottom, um, we can specify it like this, right? So I can say pad Y. Uh, is equal to 0, 10. So this will say give 0 padding on the top and then 10 padding on the bottom. Uh, perfect. So let's let's check if it's maybe noticeable. So you can see now that this spacing is equal here and here because we're only padding on the bottom. Now, if pad X and pad Y um, essentially put space around the widget, we have something known as internal padding or iPad that puts padding inside of the widget. So let's see what this looks like now. Let's add um, some internal padding. So iPad X, we'll set iPad X equal to 50 and we'll set iPad Y equal to 10. So this is going to add internal padding on the widget. 
And so if you look now, there's more space in the horizontal direction because we sent iPad X equal to 50. And there's some space here in the vertical direction now as well. So that's what internal padding does. Uh, wonderful. You can really see that space. Lastly, uh, let's talk about how we can anchor the widget. Anchoring takes essentially a compass direction like north, south, east, and west, and it pins the widget uh, in that position on the screen. So let's anchor our widget uh, to the west. So we'll say anchor equals west. So I'm just going to pass a string w. And what that's going to do, it's going to pin that uh, label right there to the left side of the screen. Uh, nice. So we really learned a lot uh, with this widget right here. Let's do one last label. Um, so name label 5, we'll call it. So tkinter.label. I'm going to fix it to the root window. I'm going to set the text. We'll say, hello, my name is Pat. And we'll set, um, let's set the background color to white. So I'll do that with hex codes, FF, FF, FF. And I'll set the foreground, the text equal to um, a hex color, uh, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? I think that was that really nice navy blue from the last video. And then, of course, let's pack this to the screen. Dot pack. And, well, let's just make sure that that works. We run this. All right, there it is. You can see we have, right, there's a little bit of space here. Why is that little bit of space right here between these two widgets? Well, if you remember, name label four, we gave it some vertical padding, zero comma 10, zero at the top and 10 at the bottom. So that's where that, that padding is right there. Um, now, let's say we want this label to fill in the whole space, okay? Um, Right, so right now it's just taking up this little bit, but if we want to make it larger, right, um, you can set the fill either in the x direction, the y direction, or both directions. So let's let's see what happens here when I type pack, and we'll say fill equals. Let's just put x. So let me close this actually, and let me run this. So if you look, now the label has filled in the entire x direction here. Really nice. Let's change it to fill in the y direction. And let's see what happens. So we're going to set the fill equal to y. Uh, doesn't really do it, does it? It kind of just takes up whatever space it needs. Um, so let's add here uh, another option, expand, and set this equal to true. If we do this, it now expands in that vertical direction. So why really, when you when you fill Y, it only fills into the height of the characters. So you can use the expand option to expand into the remaining space if you set it equal to true. Now, if you want to expand both X and Y, I don't know, can you do X, Y like this? Let's check. Uh, it looks like, it, it say, so it says here, it must be X, Y, or both. So can I type in a string both? I don't know if I can just do this. Let me see. It's not how I normally do it. So that does work. All right. So you can do it just like that. Or what you'll see a lot of times is we'll use um, both like this. Um, now, in order to do this, kind of maybe use this keyword, right? It's going to, I think it'll say it's not defined. See, it says name both is not defined. We can import this. And so a lot of times when you're importing extra, um, you know, extra things from tkinter, you'll see people do from tkinter import star. That will literally bring everything into your program. And I don't really like doing that. Um, I only want to bring in what I'm going to use. So I'm going to say from tkinter import both. And so now if I do that, I can use this nice keyword here uh, and it should work without any issue. Uh, and there you see. All right. Perfect. Um, let's add some padding around this, right? I think if you add a little bit of padding, it might look a little bit nicer. So let's add some padding. We'll say pad X is equal to 10 and pad Y is equal to 10. That should make it look a little bit nicer. And let's see. Oh, yeah, that looks a lot nicer. So there we have it, right? We made five uh, label widgets and we packed them into our root window. Labels are a great way to display text or images. Again, we'll learn how to use images shortly uh, later on. Uh, the pack method is also really important because it provides a really quick and simple way to just 
place widgets onto the screen, right? We just say, hey, throw it in the first available spot, throw it in the next available spot. We can add some padding. We can kind of anchor them to uh, different parts of the screen, uh, et cetera. So I hope you learned a lot in this video, uh, and I look forward to seeing you in our next video. Hello, and welcome back to these introductory videos on Python GUIs with Tkinter. In this video, we're going to introduce a new widget, the button, and a new layout manager known as the grid system. Um, so let's see, I'm going to save my file here. Let me just save it in the same directory uh, I've been working in, right? So code files, and let me just pull up all my, let me just do all files, there we go. Uh, so you can see, right, here's our previous files that we've been making, and so I'm going to save it in the same directory. I'm going to call this basics2, and we'll call it um, buttons and grid, okay, dot py. So there we go. Um, so a button widget is exactly what it sounds like. Something you can click and then uh, click and then run a command or function. Uh, the grid system is is a more robust layout manager uh, in comparison to the pack system, which we looked at in our last video. If pack just literally packs widgets onto the screen into the next available spot, the grid system meticulously places them in very specific positions. So this gives us more control uh, with the layout of our applications. So let's see how it all works. Um, so first I'm going to import tkinter. And let's define a TK widget as our root window, and then we'll set some of the properties of that window, right? So this is what we've been doing in the past couple of videos. We'll say define window, and we'll call our window root, and we'll set it to the TK widget. Let's set the title, so root.title, and we'll call this button basics. Okay. Uh, let's set the icon, so root.icon bitmap, and we'll use our thinking icon. And again, because I'm in that same directory as this icon file, or ICO file, I can just reference it just like this. Um, we'll set the window size, so root.geometry, I don't know, we'll just do 500 by 500. And we'll make it so you can't resize it, root.resizable. Zero, zero. And I'll just keep the system background color, so I'm not going to change the background color. Um, let's call the root windows call root windows main loop, right? That's something that we know we have to do. So root dot main loop in order to get our app to open. So if I run this now, just really quick. All right, there it is. And I know, you know, I, I could have just copied and pasted this, you know, from all of our previous videos, but I think it's good for us to do it uh, a few times, kind of give us that muscle memory uh, for what we're doing and why we're doing it. Okay, uh, so now let's make our first button widget. Uh, we'll call it name button. So let's see, we'll say create or define. Why don't we say define layout, right? Because this is going to be like the layout of the app. We're going to place our widgets onto the screen. So we're going to call our first uh, button name button. And so we'll call tkinter.button. And that'll create a button widget for us. Now, uh, just like our label widget, we first have to pass the window or frame where this widget will be placed. And in our case, it's the root window. So we'll type root here. Uh, we can also set the text property. So we'll say uh, text equals, um, let's say, we'll just say name. Okay, uh, so I think that's good. Now let's put the button onto the screen. So previously we used the pack system, right? Name uh, button dot pack. And that kind of just put it in the first available, uh, like what line, I guess we would say. It just kind of packed it in that first available space. There it is. And look, I can click the button, so that's cool. Um, but we don't want to use the pack system for this. Let's use the grid system here. Um, now, the grid system breaks your window up into a collection of rows and columns, just like, like you know, like graph paper, right? It's a grid. Um, you just need to specify which row and which column you would like to place your object. Now, uh, these rows and columns are sort of built on the fly. So uh, let me explain what I mean by that. Um, let's set in here uh, for the grid, Let's set row equal to zero, and um, we'll set column equal to zero. So we're going to specify the row and column. And so let's see how this changes our button. And so it looks like it puts the button uh, in the the top left corner of the screen, right? So row zero, right? We start with row zero and column zero. So that's kind of exactly like you would expect. 
Um, but let's change this now to row two, column two. Let's see what happens. So let's specify row two and let's specify column two. And if I run this, we might think it be, might be down and to the right, right? Like row, if this is row zero, row one, row two, and maybe column two, we thought it might, maybe it would be like down here, but it's not. It's in the same exact spot. Uh, the reason is because there are essentially no other widgets in row zero or one. There's no other widgets in column zero or one. So, so row two is the first active row and column two is essentially the first active column so the grid system places those rows in columns in the first available spot which is the upper left hand corner uh, so if that doesn't make sense to you don't worry we're going to expand on it shortly uh, in this video so let's see um, I'll set this back to uh, zero zero for for right now so we'll go back to row zero column zero right now it doesn't make any difference but it will momentarily for us let's make another button this time uh, let's call it button time so we'll say or time button we'll say time button is equal to tkinter dot button so it's a button widget we're gonna place it in the root window and uh, let's set the text so we'll say text is equal to time. And this time, let's set the background color. So we'll say BG is equal to, and I'm going to use hex codes. Um, we'll say 00FFFF. All right. And let's now place this button. So we'll do time button dot grid and we'll specify the row and column. So this time we'll place the button in row zero, but now in column one. So if we run this, actually, yeah, let's run this. So if I run this right now, here is row zero, right? The name button uh, and column zero. And this is row zero, column one, our time button. And you can see our time button has that nice different color. Um, now that we've kind of put some widgets, other widgets on the screen, let's change this back to row two and column two, and let's see what happens, right? When we ran it with nothing else on the screen, it just shoved that name button in the top left corner. But now when we do it, look where the name button goes. The name button gets kind of moved around. Uh, and this is, is sort of interesting, right? So our time button is in row zero, but column one is the first column. So it kind of just plops it right here. There's nothing in column zero. And now our name button is in row two. Well, row two is the next available column or next available row and column two is the next available column. So it, it does make a, a difference where we place these. So that's what I mean when I say we sort of build the rows and columns on the fly. All right. So we're going to change these back to zero, zero here. Wonderful. Um, now let's make a button called place. We'll say place button. Place button is equal to tkinter and we'll create a button widget. Not button, a button widget. We'll put it in the root window. We'll set the te text equal to place. Um, we'll set the background color equal to uh, hex code again. We'll use the same color. I liked it. 00FFFF. -F -F -F. And this time when I click it, I want it to change color. So I'm going to set the active active uh, background uh, equal to a different color. Let's set it equal to red. So FF0000. So by setting the active background option, that means when I click it, it won't just be that default like gray color. It will give me um, a different color that I want. So it'll give me that red color. So let's uh, use the grid system to put this on the screen. So we'll call place button dot grid and we'll put it in row zero. So we're going to stay in that same row, and now we'll put it in column two. All right, so we'll put it in column two. And this time, why don't we add some padding? So we'll set pad X equal to 10. We'll set pad Y equal to 10. And uh, let's give it some maybe internal padding. Okay, so we'll say I pad X is equal to 15. And if I run this now, we see our name button, 
our time button, and then we see that X padding of 10, and the Y padding of 10 has essentially shifted the entire row down. By just giving the vertical padding on this button, it shifts the entire row down. I pad X, the internal padding of 15, gives me that internal padding, and now if, you, if I click time, right, it gives me that default gray, but for the place button, I've set the active background, it changes it to red when I uh, click that button. Really, really nice here. Wonderful. Let's do another button because um, we're learning a lot about how buttons work, how the grid system works. Uh, so this is good. We'll call this the day button. Day button is equal to tkinter dot button <laughs> button. <laughs> I find that funny. Uh, we'll place it in the root window. We're going to set the text equal to day. Um, we'll do the background, right? I can use actual strings here. So I'll say black and the foreground. I'll change the font color by the foreground. I'll set it equal to white. And then we can also set the border width is another nice option that we can do. Border width. I'll set it equal to five. And so you'll see a thicker border now around that button. Okay. Now here, uh, when we place this, I want to place the button on the screen and I want it to be in a new row and I want it to take up all three of the columns, right? So if we look here, right, if I do day button dot grid, if I want a new row, I can set row equal to one, right? So this was my first row, row zero. And so now I'm going to move into the next available row. I could have done one, I could do two, I could do three. It doesn't matter at this point. But as I expand and build my app out, I want to make sure that I'm consistent. So I'm going to do row is equal to one, column is equal to zero. So let's just run this right now. All right, so there we have it, right? It's in its new row. It's spaced down. Why is it spaced down? Well, the place button, if you recall, we gave that a vertical padding of 10. So everything in this row gets a vertical padding of 10. Um, and you can see the border is much thicker here. It's a nice, nice thick border now. So the question is, I want to have this take up all three columns, right? I don't want this button to just be here. I want it to take up this whole space. Well, we can span all three of those columns by setting the column span option. And so I don't want to span one column or two columns. I want to span all three columns here. So let's check this. If I run this now, it looks like the button is essentially centered in all three of those columns. Um, so that's kind of good. We're, we're sort of on our way here, but we want the button to take up the whole that whole row, right? All of the space. Well, we're going to use a property of the grid system known as sticky. So in here, I'm going to set the sticky property uh, equal to, and we can give it a compass direction. So sticky is kind of like anchor that we use with the pack system. You give it a compass direction and it will sort of pin the widget. So, right, so if I just type in W, oh, and I think it's capital letters here. If I type in capital W, it should pin it to the west. And it does. And if I type in uh, E, it should pin it to the east. And it's going to pin it all the way to the end of the, yeah, because remember, we're spanning all three columns here. Um, if I wanted to go across all of them, I'll do from west to east, just like this. Uh, this will expand the widget in the horizontal direction for us. Perfect. So now it takes up that entire uh, row. That looks really, really nice. Um, so one last thing I want to do here is I want to make a collection of test buttons. So let's call this test one. We'll just call it test one. Tkinter dot button, uh, and we'll say we're going to put this in the root window, and the text is just equal to the word test. And I'm going to copy this and paste this. I think um, five more times. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, and I'm just going to rename these buttons. Test one, test two, test three, test four, test five, and test six. And so now what I'm going to do is um, let's put these test buttons on the screen. Um, we're going to put them in rows two and rows three. Uh, and so let's see. Um, test one dot grid. We'll put it in row two column zero. I'm going to give it some horizontal padding uh, of five and some vertical padding of five. And so I'm going to just copy this quickly. And one, two, three, four, five. And we're just going to change these numbers. Two, three, four, five, and six. All right, so my first button is going to be in row two, column zero. My second button is going to be in row two, column one. And my third button is going to be in row two, column three. 
or column two, I'm sorry. So zero, one, and two. And then we're going to change these rows to row three. We're going to put them in the next row. And button four will be in column zero, button five will be in column one, and button six will be in column two. Just like that. Awesome. So let's run this and let's see what, what this looks like. So I should have two nice rows of buttons. Um, and so they are there, right? So we get two rows, but you can see the odd spacing here. And I don't really like this. Uh, in fact, what I really want are two rows of evenly spaced out buttons. Well, I'm not really going to get it here. Uh, and the reason why is the size of each column, right? Column 0, column 1, and column 2. Uh, the size of those columns is de defined by the largest item in the column. So my third column's width is defined by the place button's width. So when I put a new button in the column, it gets centered into that column by default. So you can see, right, we're getting centered right here, and it throws off all of our spacing. A temporary fix may be to use sticky and pin the button to the west. Um, so let's try this. So let's go to test three right here, right? And we'll say sticky equals uh, west. And I can do this down here as well. Sticky equals to the west. And so that gives me uh, a little bit better uh, spacing. You can still tell, though, that there is a little bit of uh, odd gaps here. So this is kind of like a temporary fix. Um, it looks OK, but I think there's a better way to handle this. And I'm going to show you how we handle um, trying to redefine our columns and our rows uh, in upcoming videos. Uh, I think this is a good place to stop. In regards to placing things on the screen here with Python and tkinter, Pack is a good, quick method to get items on the screen when the layout's not complicated. If you have a more complicated layout, grid, the grid system is a much more robust uh, tool for you to use. It gives you a lot more control. Um, we're going to work with both of these layout managers, Pack and Grid, uh, throughout the scope of this course. Uh, I hope to see you in our next video. Hello and welcome back. In our last video, we saw a complication to the grid system. The column size is determined by the largest widget you place in the column. This can then make for some layout difficulties like we saw with our row of test buttons. To make life easier, when you know you have certain sections of your layout that are going to go together, you should use a frame. The frame widget groups and organizes other widgets together. It works like a container, which is responsible for arranging the positions of other widgets. You put other widgets, like buttons and labels, into a frame, and then put the frame onto the window. So let's start by making our window and setting some properties. So we'll import tkinter, and we'll say define window. And again, we'll make our root window by calling a tk object, or tk widget, I should say. Okay. We'll set the title, root.title, uh, frame, basics. Um, we'll set the icon, root.icon bitmap, and I'll use my thinking icon, so thinking.ico. I'll set the geometry, root.geometry. We'll make this 500 by 500. And um, I'm not going to care. If, you can resize this if you want to, so I'll leave the resizable off. And so now let's run the root windows main loop. So run root windows main loop by calling root dot main loop. All right, and so that should run our window here. Wonderful, looks good. Perfect. Um, okay, so we know that frames are going to help us better control the layout of our application. So let's see a great example of why. I'm going to make a label called name label, and why don't I put a little comment here? We'll say example of why to use frames. So I'm going to say name label is equal to a label, so tkinter.label. It's a label widget. We'll put it in the root window, and we'll say text is equal to enter your name. And then we're going to pack this onto the screen. So name label.pack. We'll use the pack uh, system. Um, so we packed this right onto the root window. Now I'm going to make a button. So we'll make a button called name button. Name button is equal to tkinter.button. 
and we'll put it in the root window and we'll say text is equal to uh, submit your name. So we'll try to, you know, enter your name and submit your name. And now I'm going to use the grid system to put this in a specific spot, right? So I'm going to say name button dot grid and I'm going to put it in row zero column one. And so if I run this right now, let's see what happens. Oh, we get an error and it says cannot use geometry manager grid inside uh, our essentially root window, which already has slaves being managed by pack. So you see, you can't have more than one layout manager running at once for a specific widget. This is kind of like a big bummer, right? Our, our TK widget, we started using the pack manager uh, and your layout manager, and then we tried using the grid layout manager too with it, and it, it gave us an error. So you're not going to pack a few widgets onto the screen and then maybe make a row of three widgets using, using grid. Uh, it's not going to work. Of course, you could do this if you used frames. When you use frames, you can use whatever layout manager you want within the frame as long as you are consistent in your choice within that frame. So if you make a frame and you, you can use pack within that frame, then you make a new frame, you can use grid, uh, etc. So let's let's maybe comment comment this out. But it's good to keep that there, example Y. Um, so now let's put a little comment here. Let's make some frames. So define frames. Let's define these frames. We're going to make three frames uh, here. Now, you can make a frame widget or a label frame widget. They're essentially kind of the same thing. The difference is that a label frame widget gives the frame a nice border, and you can display a text label or image label right within the frame border. So let's see. We're going to uh, create our three frames, and we're going to place them in the root window, and then we'll give them specific background colors, I guess. So we'll call this first frame we'll call pack frame. And we'll call the frame widget, so tkinter frame. We have to put the frame or assign the frame to a window. So we're going to assign it to the root window. And then we'll set a pro the background property. We'll just set this equal to red so we can really see it. And then we're going to call grid frame one. We're going to make a frame called grid frame one, so tkinter.frame. And again, I'm going to pack this, or I'm going to, I'm sorry, assign it to the root window. And I'm going to set the background property to blue. And then I'll make one last frame. I'll call it grid frame two. And this time I'm going to make it a label frame. So a label frame, label frame. And again, we have to assign it to a window. So we'll assign it to the root window. The label frame, right? I can put a label right within the border of the frame. So I can set the text property here. And I'll just say grid system rules. All right. And maybe I'll set the border width equal to, I don't know, five here. So there are three frames that we defined. So now I can pack the frames onto our root. So I'll say pack frames onto root, the root window. Uh, and so in order to do this, right, if I want to pack them, uh, we're just going to pack them right on top of each other. So one on the top, then the next, and then the next. So we'll say uh, pack frame dot pack. We'll say grid frame one dot pack. And we'll say Oops, there we go. Grid frame two dot pack. And there's nothing wrong with this, right? Because for the root widget, right, my TK widget, which is way up here, uh, I'm only using one layout manager, and that's the pack system. So if I run this, let's let's just take a look. If I run this, we don't really uh, we don't really see uh, anything, right? We see nothing. Well, we sort of see something, I guess. We see some little squares, like colored squares right here and here. Uh, this is because there's nothing within these frames, right? So there's there's no reason to expand the frames. Um, there's nothing inside of them. So those are the, the frame sizes are extremely small. Um, but we know how we can expand um, a widget. So I'm going to use the uh, both keywords. So I'm going to say from tkinter import both. Okay, I'm going to bring that keyword in. And then down here, uh, when I pack these frames onto the screen, I'm going to say fill is equal to both. And we'll set expand equal to true. Oops, true. There we go. And I'm just going to copy and paste this. And so we saw how to do this in a previous video with our widgets. And while we're at it, so if we run this, let's just check. 
this should now bring our frames out. All right, so we got a nice red frame, a nice blue frame, and then you can see the label frame gives us a nice border, and we can put a label right in here. So it says grid system rules. Um, while we're at it, let's um, let's just fill in the uh, the second frame in the x direction instead of both. Let's just do x. Why not? Right, so we'll say X, and let's add some padding on our third frame. So I'm going to say pad X equals 10, pad Y is equal to 10. Give it a little bit more space. So I'm just trying to re refresh, um, you know, what's going on with some of the other commands here. So now if you look at our second frame, the fill is just in the X direction. When we add some widgets, this will begin to expand in the Y direction. And now you can see some nice padding here on our third frame. All right, I think that looks really good. So now we have three frames where we can set the layout independently of other frames. So in our pack frame, right, this first one right here, let's use the pack system to throw some labels onto the screen, just one on top of the next. So let's see, down here I'm going to put a comment, I'll call this pack frame, and we'll say uh, T Kinter label, um, and I'm going to put it onto the pack frame. The text is equal to, we'll just say text, and now I'm going to call right on this dot pack. So I'm not, this is another way that you can do it. I, uh, you know, I, or before I was creating the widget and then packing it onto the screen on two separate lines. Uh, you can do it all on one line just like this. Um, but when you do this, be careful because you don't have a reference to this object now. So if I run this right, uh, it should work. See, and there's text, but I, I have no reference to this 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 uh, little label right there. And so um, while it works, it sometimes might not be the most efficient way to do it. Um, but for right now, we'll show you um, that that's one of the ways you can do this. So we'll make another label, tkinter.label. Oh, it's actually, let's just copy and paste this three times, right? Let's, let's do that. So we'll just pack these right onto the screen. So copy, paste, and paste. And so remember, the pack system, just one on top of the other in the next available spot. Perfect. Um, let's go to a different frame now. So let's use grid frame one, a new frame so we can use uh, a new layout manager. Let's use uh, the grid system to kind of make a staircase uh, of the word text. So we'll say uh, down here, we'll say grid one layout. And I'm going to say tkinter.label. I'm going to make a label. I'm going to put it in grid frame one. All right, and the text is going to just equal text. And like before, I don't really need to keep a reference to any of these uh, widgets, at least for this you know simple purpose. So I'm just going to call dot grid on it, and I'm going to put it in row zero, column zero. All right, and so now I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to paste this a few times. All right, and so we'll say row zero here. We'll change this to one and one and then we'll change this to two and two. So if we look, right, oh, there we go. If I run this, no errors at all. And so that's kind of nice. And you can see how this, this frame has expanded in the vertical direction and the Y direction to fit these widgets. So that uh, was nice there. If we look, we created our three frames and we put them on the root window. Uh, using pack. Then we took our labels and we placed them onto the pack frame. So those are those three. And then we took our other labels and we put them onto the grid frame. Those are those three. Um, and we use the different layout managers. So that, that's pretty nice. Um, let's, let's keep going. Let's try to put a really large label in row four, column zero. So I'm going to put a really large lab label right here in row four, column zero. I just want it to span all the way across here. So let's say tkinter dot label. Um, uh, and we'll say grid frame one. And then we'll say uh, text is equal to ah, all, all of that really, really big stuff. Uh, and then we'll do dot grid and we'll put it in row three, column zero. Let's see how this lurks. Oh, I forgot an equal sign. I see row equals three, column equals zero. 
Let's run that again. Okay, when I do that, oh, it looks terrible, right? You can see, look at our nice little staircase that we had built. Uh, it completely throws the layout off. Because remember, this first column, the width of that column is defined by the largest widget, which is inside of it, which is this kind of mess of a label right here. Um, really not what we want. So let's move it. Let's move this label to our other frame, right? If we move this label to our frame, it, these two layout managers should act independent of each other. And so our staircase should be uh, rebuilt again. So I'm just going to comment this line out. And let's go to grid frame two here. So we'll say uh, grid two layout. And let's just, I'm just going to copy this actually. Let's put this widget back in. And so now here, instead of grid frame one, I'm going to attach it to grid frame two, the other frame. And now my row, I'm just going to set it to row zero, column zero. And if I run this, all right, it, it, it looks perfect, right? There's our uh, label and our staircase is still intact. Since the layouts are independent, we're able to place this new label in the second grid, uh, that's grid two frame, and it won't affect what's in that first grid frame. Um, perfect. See, frames in conjunction with pack and grid systems can help you when you're trying to make some rather complicated layouts. For simpler layouts, we may just use the single root window, okay? But when we start getting more complex layouts, you can bet we'll rely on the use of frames. A lot of times I like to create maybe input and output frames for the sections of my app that will get user input and then give output based on that input. Um, so you'll see us doing that a lot in some of our upcoming videos. Okay, I think that's it for this video. Uh, I hope to see you in our next video. Hello and welcome back. We're well on our way to having a solid foundation in some of the basic principles and ideas of Python GUIs and Tkinter. And that's going to help us build some pretty awesome apps as we move forward. We've learned about some of the basic widgets Tkinter has to offer, such as TK windows, labels, and buttons. We've also seen some basics of how we can manage our application layout with the pack and grid systems and frames. In this video, I'd like to show you how you can program some of the functionality of your application and make it more interactive using functions. Also, we'll learn our first way to get user input via the entry widget. So let's begin by making our TK window and setting some of its properties. Um, so let's see, we got to import tkinter. All right, and we're going to put a comment here, define window. Uh, and so we're going to make our root window by calling tkinter.tk. We'll make a tk widget. And let's set the title, root.title, to uh, entry basics. Basics. We'll set the icon, root.icon bitmap. Again, I'm in that same directory we've been working out of, so I can just reference my icon as thinking.ico um, because it's right there in that directory. Um, we'll set the window size, root.geometry, as a 500 by 500 window. And I'll set it so we can't resize it, root.resizable, by giving two zeros here for the x and y. And let's run the root windows main loop by calling root.main loop. All right, let's just test it. Always good to make sure that that's working. Uh, again, we're going to go through this uh, just a few times here in these introductory videos just to make sure we get a good handle for the steps that go into making a basic application here. Awesome. I think this looks perfect. So now let's make a couple of frames. Um, we're going to be getting user input via an entry box, an entry widget, and then we're going to do some work with it and then spit it back out. And so we're going to have an input frame and an output frame here. Um, we're going to place both of these frames in our root window, and let's give them a background color. So we'll, we'll put a comment here, define frames. I'm going to call my first frame input frame, and I'm going to set it equal to a, a tkinter frame widget. I'm going to put it in the root window, and I'm going to set the background color equal to hex value 0000FF, which is going to be a really nice blue. Um, let's see, the output frame, output frame, I'm going to set this equal to tkinter.frame, uh, a frame widget. We'll put it in the root window, and I'm going to set the background color to a nice red, uh, hex value FF0000. 
Um, now, our root window lets use the pack manager to put things onto the screen in the root window. So I'm just going to call input frame dot pack, and I'm going to give it some padding. Pad x equals 10, pad y equals 10. All right, and then I'll call output frame dot pack. Uh, pad x equals 10. And for right now, let's do pad y equals 10. We might change that in a second. So let's run this. So if I run it, um, no surprise, you can see a little square and a little square. And that's because we didn't expand and fill these frames, right? You saw in the last video or a couple of videos ago, we had expand equals both, fill equals true, or fill equals both, expand equals true. Um, that, that made the frames blow up, right? Right now, there's nothing in them, and we haven't done that. So those frames um, are extremely small. Um, but we can set a new property uh, here in the frames when we define them, uh, the width and the height to give them a specific size. So let's set the width of my input frame equal to 500. So it's going to take up the whole window width. And then let's set the height equal to 100. So it should just be a small top portion of that. And down here in the output frame, let's set the width equal to 500. So it'll take up the entire window frame. And let's set the height equal to 400. So we can sort of kind of set the size here of our frames. And so now this should expand them. Hey, I think that looks pretty good. Um, I'm noticing something that I don't like is that you have this uniform spacing all around the frames, and then it's kind of larger here in between the two. And that's because the input frame has a vertical padding of 10 on the top and the bottom, and the output frame has a vertical padding of 10 on the top and the bottom. So that means right here, you get 10 from the bottom and 10 from the top, that makes 20. So we can change this by just saying, okay, output frame, zero on the top, 10 on the bottom. We'll pass that as a tuple. And if I run this now, it should give us some nice uniform padding, which I'm going to like a lot. Yeah, I like it a lot, and you should like it too. It looks really good. Um, it looks really, really nice here. Perfect. So I think I have a couple of these um, apps open. Let me close them. There we go. Okay, so now let's add some things to our frames. Let's add to our input frame. So for our input frame, we want the user um, to be able to type something into our application. And so this is where the entry widget comes in handy. So let's create an entry widget. Uh, and so right here, I'm going to maybe put a little comment. I'm going to say add inputs. And so we'll call this widget text entry. And we're going to set it equal to the entry widget. All right. And now I want to put this widget on the input frame. OK, so I'm going to put it on the input frame. And right now, uh, I'll just leave it like that. OK, and the input frame will use the grid system. We'll use the grid system here. So I'm going to say text entry dot grid to put it on the, the screen. We'll say row equals zero, column equals zero. So that'll put it in the upper left-hand corner of the frame. And let's give it some horizontal padding and some vertical padding. And so let's just run this right now. Okay, perfect. Um, a few things you notice here, right? The frame, this is a, a specific size, okay? The, we can change the width of the entry. So let's do that now. Let's make, let's come up here back to our definition of the text entry and we'll say width, we'll set the width property equal to, I don't know, 40. So that should make it a little bit larger for me which is what I want. Who knows how much? Yeah, look at that. That's nice. Who knows how much stuff we're going to be entering in here. But one of the things you might notice is that the frame has kind of uh, changed its size, right? So the frame has taken the shape of the widget that it holds. Since this widget is this specific size, the frame doesn't need to be any larger than that. Um, I don't want this to happen right now. And so there is a property of the frame that we can then change. And so I'm going to come down here uh, right after I put those inputs uh, and I'm going to call input frame. And now there's two ways you could do this. Um, you can do it for the grid system or for the pack system. Since the input frame is being managed by the grid system, I'm going to call grid underscore propagate. So grid propagate, and I set a Boolean value in here. I give it a Boolean value. I'm going to set a, pass a zero here. Uh, this means that the frame will no longer resize to the size of the widgets that it contains. So it should always just stay the same size now. So let's, let's run this and check. 
Hey, perfect. Look at that. And my uh, input bar is right here in the upper left hand corner with some nice horizontal and vertical padding. So that grid propagate um, is working nicely. Awesome. So now let's make a button that will hopefully do something with whatever text that the user puts in. Um, let's call it um, let's call it the print button. So we'll come down here in underneath this comment for the inputs. We'll say uh, print button equals a tkinter dot button, and we're going to put it in the input frame, right? That's where we're putting it. The text will say print. Uh, why not, right? And we're just going to leave it blank uh, just like that. And so let's put this on the screen here. So we'll do print button dot. We have to use the grid system, right? Because the input frame is being managed by the grid system. So everything that goes on it has to be the grid system. And we'll put it in row zero, but this time we'll move it to column one. And we'll give it some pad X of five, a pad Y of five. And I want to add some internal padding, right? If I run this right now, I think the, the button's going to look kind of small. Let's just see. Yeah, it looks kind of weird in comparison to what else is in here. So I'm going to uh, add some internal padding. I'm going to say um, iPad X is equal to, I don't know, let's say, if I do 40, is that, well, let's do 30. Sometimes, you know, you just got to like feel it out. You got to um, see what it looks like. Do I need a little bit more? Um, yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. Okay, so that's good. Um, perfect. So now it, it looks like we have this button. Um, but right now when we press the button, right, if, if I look, let me just run this again. If I press the button, nothing happens. So I can type something in here. But when I press the button, absolutely nothing happens. Uh, this is because we somehow now have to link the button press to a specific command or action in our code. Uh, and so we can do this by setting the command property of the button. So let's go back to our button definition. So here's our print button. Here's where we defined it. Let's set a new property, the command property. And I'm going to set, set this equal to a function uh, that we are now going to write. So I'm going to set this equal to a function that I'm going to call make label. All right, so it's going to make label. Um, so I've set the command property equal to some function that I'm going to write called make label. So I should probably write this function. Now you want to make sure you define your function above wherever your function calls. I always like to define my functions um, right after I define my window. So I'm going to say def make label. All right, and we'll give it uh, just a simple doc string, right? Why not? Um, print a label to the app. Oop, there we go. So in here now, anytime I press this button, it's going to run this command. So anytime I press the print button, it's now linked to the make label function and the make label function will run. So I mean, just really simply, right? If I just type print hello world, oops, doo -doo -doo -doo, hello world and I run this now just in in my terminal here it should print it anytime I if, anytime I type it so if I pr print hello world hello world hello world this action is now linked and the action is being monitored because the root main loop window uh, or main loop is is constantly running right this while loop is constantly running so it's 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 registering that action now what we really want we don't want to just print to a terminal we want to make something happen in our application and so let's talk about how we might be able to do that all right, so um, in here, uh, we have to define this function. Uh, but once we do, uh, it's going to work all the time. So in our make label function, we want to output our entered text to the screen. So let's make a label and place it in the output. Um, so I'm going to make a label, all right, because that's what we use to uh, create text to the screen. So I'm going to call this label text. And why don't I call it? Yeah, I'll just call it text equals a tkinter dot label widget. Um, I want to place it on the output frame and the text. I want to grab whatever text is from our entry box. So to do this, we can use the dot get method. So I'm going to say text is equal to my widget that is the text entry box is called text entry. So I'm going to reference that name text entry. And then I'm going to get whatever 
uh, text is in that box. All right, a lot of times I forget to put the dot get and it tells me that there's an error and I can't figure out why and then I have to remember, oh, I have to call dot get to go get that text. All right, so now that we have that text, um, let's pack this label to the screen. So the output uh, frame will just use pack, okay, to control its layout. So text.pack. We'll, we'll put that there. And then the last thing that I really want to do, um, let me show you. I'll run this right now. Let's see. So let's just make sure that this is working. So I'll say, um, hello, world. And so if I click print, it now prints it right there. Awesome. Um, a couple of things we'll notice is that the whole label just disappeared. It took the size of this. I don't like that. We'll get to that later. But one of the things I'd like it to do is kind of clear this entry box after I click print, right? I don't want to have to go back and manually delete it um, like that. So let's talk about how we could do that. So to um, manual to clear that entry box, I'm going to call the dot delete method, which is going to take two arguments. So I'm going to call uh, text entry, which is the name of the entry box that I have, dot delete. And now it takes two arguments, the first index that you're going to go to and the last index that you're going to go to. Well, we want to start at the beginning uh, of the field, so we're going to use zero as our starting index, but the last index is going to change based on how many characters the user has typed, right? So let's bring in the end keyword. And what this is going to do is it's always going to go to the end of the user's string that they put into the uh, entry box. We just have to make sure that we now import this. So I'm going to say from t kinter import end. And that's going to make life really nice for us. So if I run this now, I think our function is going to work really great. So I can type some stuff in, it prints it, and it clears it to the screen. Awesome. Let's talk about how we might um, really quick fix the fact that our label is disappearing, right? Right here, um, I'm going to go back down here. These are our inputs. Um, I'm just going to, on a separate line, I'll say keep output uh, frame size. And so we're going to call that propagate, all uh, right, uh, grid propagate or pack propagate. So we want to call it on the output frame, but the output frame is not being managed by grid. It's being managed by pack. So I'm going to call pack propagate and I'm going to pass a zero. And so now if I run this, let's just check. It should work pretty good. Okay. Hey, look at that. Awesome. Another thing that we might want to do right now is let's just change the background color of our label to red. That'll look nicer. So right in here, we'll say text. Uh, uh, now we'll set the background property. BG is equal to red FF0000. I like hex color codes better. I don't know why. Um, and this should look really good now, so let's check. Hey, cool, and it seems to be working out just the way we want it to. So pretty good, we've written our first function. Um, that's great. Now, let's just uh, stop for a second. If we check this now, right, our button is linked to the make label function uh, via the command property, so that's great. And it works wonderfully every time the button's pressed. Uh, I want to draw attention to the fact that in this example, when we call the make label function in our button definition here, we don't have parentheses, right? It's just just the name of the function, make label. Um, we just link it via the command property. So what if you have a function that maybe requires an argument to be passed and you need to pass that information along? You sort of can't do it here. Well, we can do it a different way using lambdas. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Let's create a, uh, a button that will count on the screen for us. So we're going to learn some interesting things here, um, uh, some new things right here. So let's put a new uh, comment here. We'll say pass a parameter with lambda. OK, so we're going to create a new button. Uh, on the screen that is going to count for us. Um, first, let's create a variable called value that's going to keep track of the number that we're counting. So value is equal to zero. And let's create our count button. So count button is equal to tkinter.button. And we're going to put this button on the input frame, all right, because we want the user to be able to press it. And the text will just read count. And let's 
use the grid system, right? We'll put it on the screen. So count button dot grid. The input frame is being managed by the grid system. We'll put it in the first row and column equals zero. Uh, and so right the we have the entry box in the first row and column zero, and then the print button in the first row column one. Okay, we want I want this button to sort of span everything. So I'm going to do a column span of two, and we're going to put some horizontal padding of five, some vertical padding of five, and then I'm going to call sticky, the sticky command, to spread it out from west to east. So it should take up that whole um, scenario here, or that whole portion. Yeah, and I think that looks kind of nice, right? So now I can click that. Um, but again, when I click the count button, it doesn't do anything. So I want to link it via the command property. So I'm going to come over here, command, and I'm going to set it equal to, now let's see here. Um, I'm going to set it equal to uh, lambda and then colon, and I'm going to pass the uh, function name. We're going to call our function called count up. And in here, I'm going to pass an actual value, which we call value. All right, so I think that this is going to work out nicely. I got one too many uh, parentheses here. So now when our command property is set, if we want to pass an argument, we have to use a lambda. We name the function, and now we pass the, um, the parameter that we're sending it. And we're going to send it whatever this value is right here. So initially, it's going to be 0. So let's go and define this function now. So I'm going to say def uh, count up. And it is going to take a, we'll call it a number here. So perfect. And I'm just going to put a little doc string here, count up on the app. Sure. All right, so let's write this, uh, let's write this function now. Inside of the count up function, I want to alter the value of the variable uh, value, right? So I define value way down here, which exists outside of the scope of the function. Um, so any change that I make inside here to that variable is only going to exist inside here. So one of the ways I could change that is I can make the variable uh, a global. So I'll declare it as a global variable. So I'll say global value. And when I do this, uh, any changes that I make to this uh, variable uh, inside of the function are then going to exist outside of the function. So that's good. Um, let's make a label. So I'll say text is equal to uh, tkinter.label. And we're going to put it in the output frame. And we're going to set the text equal to whatever the value is of the number that was passed to the function call. And I'm going to set the background equal to red here again. So it kind of blends in nicely. And then if you recall, our output frame is being managed by pack. So I'm going to pack the text to the screen. And then I'm going to change the um, variable value. So I'm going to say value is equal to whatever number we passed. So number plus uh, one. So let's run this now. And let's see. I should be able to count right on the screen now. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Perfect. All right? Because I'm passing whatever value I put here. So if I put 5, now I'm passing a... Uh, parameter 5 or an argument 5 here to the count up function and so it should start at 5. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Perfect. Watch what happens if I don't declare the variable value as a global here. Let me just comment this out. Oops. There we go. Any changes that I make to this variable value now only exist inside of the function, uh, and it won't carry. So now I think it's just going to keep printing 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, and it does. So you're going to see um, sometimes we have to use these, uh, we have to make a variable uh, global, and it's going to help us out as we move forward. Okay, uh, this is great. I think this is a good place to stop. We've written a couple of functions and linked them to our buttons. We saw how to do it with lambdas, uh, and we now have an application that we can interact with. Uh, I'd like to do a f just a few more of these sort of intro videos before we dive into creating our first real application very, very soon. I hope you're enjoying the learning that's taking place here, and I can't wait to see you in that next video. Hello and welcome back. In our last video, we saw how we could enter in information using an entry widget. 
In this video, I'm going to introduce another widget that allows users to enter information, the radio button. A radio button is a simple click option that can dictate how your program runs. This widget is essentially a multiple choice button, which is a way to offer many possible selections to the user and let the user choose only one of them. So let's start by making our window and setting some properties. So I'll say import tkinter. Uh, again, I have a new file here saved in the same directory I've been working out of. Um, so I'll say define window and we'll call my root window by uh, referencing tkinter and we'll create a tk widget. And then we'll call root.title. We'll set this as radio button basics. We'll set the icon, root.icon bitmap, as my thinking.ico. Let's set the geometry, root.geometry, geometry. I don't know. Let's change it up. Let's do 350 by 350. Why not? I think that should work fine. And we'll make it so you can't resize the window, right? Resizable is 0, 0. All right. And then let's run the root windows main loop by calling root.main loop. So that'll kick the app into gear and open up that window for us. And it looks like I made a, made a mistake. Thicking. Oh, because I spelled thicking. Think. Thinking. Thinking. I think, is that spelled right? Man, it all looks wrong now. Let's check. There we go. Perfect. So it looks like that's running uh, quite nicely. Uh, wonderful. So now um, let's make some frames, right? Because we're going to be getting user input and we're going to be outputting some things onto the screen. So I'll say define frames here. Um, let's create an input and an output frame, uh, frame like we've done in our previous videos. This time though, for the input frame, I'm going to use a label frame. So I get a nice border on that input uh, area. So let's see, we'll say input frame is equal to tkinter dot, I'll call a label frame this time. And we'll set the, put this in the root window. And I'm going to set the width equal to, width equal to 350 and the height equal to, um, Let's do 50 here. Let's try that. And I guess I can set the text too. Why don't I say text is equal to, because it's a label frame, why not? Text is equal to, this is fun. <laughs> Silly, but it just shows that we can do that for a label frame, I guess. And we'll make an output frame. Output frame is equal to a, this, so let's just do a regular old frame. I don't care about the border here. We'll do root. We'll make the width equal to 350 still. And the height this time, let's set it equal to, uh, when we got 300 left to work with. So we'll set this equal to 300. And um, we'll just place these uh, onto the root window using the pack system. So we'll say input frame dot pack. And we'll pack this with pad X of 10 and horizontal padding of 10. And let's do output frame dot pack. And we'll do pad X is equal to 10. And then we saw this before, right? My pad Y, I'm going to do zero on the top because I'm already getting it from the vertical padding of the input frame. And then I'm going to put 10 on the bottom. So if I run this, let's see what it looks like. OK, looks pretty good. Um, you really don't see much of anything. Um, because the output frame, we didn't set the background color, uh, so this is fine. And this is fun. This looks a little bit small to me. Let me expand this from 50. Let me make it, I don't know, let's make it, let's make it 100. And we'll set this to um, 250, maybe. Let's just try that. Okay, I think that looks better. That looks a little bit better. So now let's put some radio buttons inside of here in the input frame to give the user some options, right? To get some input from the from the user. Uh, so we're going to create two radio buttons. Um, and so let me put create, I don't know, define widgets. We'll just say here, define widgets. Um, so I'm going to create two buttons. So I'll call one radio one, and I'm going to set it equal to a tkinter.radio button. So there's my radio button widget. And I'm going to put this on the input frame. And the, uh, the text will just read print the number 1. All right, and let's make a second radio button. Radio 2 is equal to tkinter.radio button. So there's our radio button widget. We're going to put this on the input frame. And we'll say the text will read print the number 2. Awesome. 
Uh, and then let's see, so I've got my two radio buttons and let's also make a print button that when we push it will hopefully print some information to the screen for us. So I'm going to say print button is equal to tkinter dot, this is just going to be a regular old button widget, so tkinter dot button and we're going to put it on the input frame just like before and the text will say print the number. Okay, um, now let's see, uh, let's use the grid system on the input frame to uh, manage the layout. So we'll say radio one dot grid and we'll do row equals zero, column equals zero. So it's going to be in the upper left hand corner of the input frame, but let's give it some padding. So pad x of 10, pad y of 10. Radio uh, two dot grid, let's put this on here. We'll do row zero, but this time let's do column one. We'll do pad x of 10, and let's do pad y of 10. And the pad x of 10 is going to be double in between, and I think that's going to look nice. It's going to space them out a little bit more. And then let's put our, uh, our, our button, print button on the screen. So print button dot grid, row equals, let's put it in a new row, so row one column zero and I want it to be centered under both of these right so I don't know let me just run this right now if we look at the layout right I want this to be centered under both of these buttons so in order to do that I just have to <clears throat> span more than one column so I'm going to set the column span uh, option equal to two and then let's give it some padding pad x is 10 pad y is 10 so let's see what this looks like uh, look at that. I think that looks really nice. Um, so that looks great. I think that looks really great. Um, a few things that you notice though, right? Um, both radio buttons are sort of selected. That's not good. So, and I can't d unclick them. So they're automatically selected and I can't unclick them. So why is this happening? Well, this is because we haven't linked these radio buttons to a variable to keep track essentially of what button is being pressed. To do that, we have two options. We can use integer variables or string variables. So um, I'm going to choose to use integer variables in this case. Uh, so to do this, we actually have to import um, something else from tkinter. So we're going to say from tkinter import, since I'm going to use integer variables, I'm going to import int var. If I was using string variables, I could import uh, string var, okay, right, depending on what type of variable we want. And we're going to use string variables coming up shortly, so don't worry, you're going to see them. So I'm just going to use some int variables here, integer variables. So right here where my radio buttons are, let me put a comment, D define radio buttons. Uh, the first thing that I have to do is initialize a variable. So I'm going to initialize a variable. I'm going to use the variable name number, and I'm going to let Python know that this is going to be an int var, okay, an, an instance of the integer variable. If it was a string, you could type string var here, right? Now what I want to do is I want to link this new variable to our radio button. So here are our two radio buttons. So I'm going to link, or I'm sorry, here are our two radio buttons. I'm going to link this variable to our radio button. So I'm going to say variable is equal to number. Okay, on both of these. Variable is equal to number. So now I have a, 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 sir, oh, a comma. So now I have a variable that's keeping track of the state of which button is being pressed. Um, but I also have to give the radio button a value that it will pass to the variable when the radio button is clicked. Now, since our variable is an integer variable, we have to make sure that the value is an integer here, right? If I use string variables, I would have to make sure that the value is a string variable. So in my radio button, I'm going to set another option. I'm going to set the value option and I'm going to set the first button equal to one and the second button value is equal to 2. Okay, um, so let's check, right? Uh, if I run this, oh, it says number is not defined. Oh, of course it's not. See, look, I, I have my variable reference here, number, but I don't define it until down here, so I gotta, I gotta move this up. That was a, a silly mistake. 
So let's try that again. All right, and so now it looks like neither one of them are clicked. I can click, that one is clicked. If I click this one, it looks like that is removed. So this is working uh, quite nicely. So right now, right, when this is clicked, the variable number has a value of one, and when this one is clicked, the variable number is gonna take a value of two. Awesome. Uh, one last thing I can do is you notice when I ran this, nothing was set initially. So at, upon startup of our app, I can call uh, number dot. I can call the set method to set a specific value for the variable. So I'm going to set the variable number to one. And now when I do this, the first radio button should be automatically picked, and it is awesome. If I had set, set it equal to two, it would have been the second button. Okay, so this seems to be working nicely. Right? Our radio buttons are working nicely. Um, now, let's write a function that's going to link our print button to some command. So in my print button here, I'm going to type in command equals, and we're going to call my command make label, because that's what we're going to be doing, okay? Uh, and so now I just have to define this label. So let me clean this up a bit. There we go. Up here, after I define my window, I'm going to define my functions, and I'm going to say def make label. And we're just going to say print to the screen. Perfect. All right. So inside of here, uh, let's check. What do we want to do? Well, if the user has clicked the first radio button, we want to print the number one. And if the user has clicked the second radio button, we want to print the number two. So we have to kind of have um, some conditional statements here. So if um, the first radio button has a value of one, well, the first radio button is called radio one, right? And the variable is the variable number. So what we want to do is we want to get the value of the variable that we have here. So we're going to say if number dot get, so we're going to call the dot get method on our variable, just like we called the dot get method on our entry box in the previous videos to get the text that was in there, we can call dot get on an int var or a string var to get its value. Um, so we're going to say if number dot get is equal to one, well, then we're going to create a label. num label is equal to tkinter dot label. Uh, we're going to put in the output frame and the text is just going to read one, one, one. <laughs> Funny. Um, elif number dot get is equal to two well then that means if the value is two our second radio button is clicked um, we're going to say we're going to call our label num label is equal to tkinter dot label it's a label widget on the output frame and we're going to say the text is equal to two 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 and then once that's done, we're just going to call num label and we're going to pack it to the screen. We can pack it on the output frame because the output frame isn't being managed yet. So we're going to say, hey, output frame, use the pack uh, manager. So let's check this. Let's let's see if this is going to work now. OK, so if I have the first uh, radio button selected, so the value of the variable number is 1, and I print it, and then it says 1, 1, 1. But if I click the second radio button, now the value of the variable has changed to two. So if you come back up here in our make label function, right, this conditional is not going to pass. It's going to be this one that runs. And we get two, two, two. Awesome. And so, right, we can switch back and forth. And it seems like our radio buttons are working great. Um, perfect. Now we could expand this to have many more radio buttons, right? Instead of print the number one, print two, we could print three, print four, etc. So we're going to build upon this and see how to have more radio buttons and use not only int vars, but also those string vars that we were talking about for radio button variables as we progress through these videos. I think this is a great place to stop for now. Um, I look forward to seeing you in our next video. Hello and welcome back to this awesome course on Python GUIs and tkinter. At this point, if you've been watching all of the tutorial videos, you should hopefully have a solid understanding of some of the basic pipe of Python GUIs with tkinter. I'd like to show you one last concept before we dive into making some full-fledged applications. In this video, I'd like to show you how we can work with various image files like PNG or JPEG. So let's see, I got a new file here. I'm saving it in that same directory that we've been working with. Uh, I will import tkinter and let's make our um, 
let's make our basic window. So we'll create a window and set the window properties. So define window and I'll call it root is equal to tkinter.tk. .tk. Okay. Oops. What did I do there? Root is equal to tkinter.tk. So we'll make a tk widget. We'll set the title, root.title, and we'll call this image basics. We'll put our icon, root.icon bitmap, and we're in that same directory we've been working out of, so thinking.ico for our ICO file. We'll set the geometry, root.geometry. Let's make this a little bit bigger. We'll do 700 by 700. And I don't care if you resize the window, so I'm not going to set the resizable property here. And so now we'll say run root windows main loop root dot main loop and that'll kick our app into gear okay so always good let's test it let's run it and that looks perfect it looks great wonderful so now let's first approach images uh, with PNG files and so we'll call this maybe the basics so I'm gonna put a comment here and we'll say basics dot 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 works for PNG Okay, so um, first let's go out and talk about where I'm going to get the PNG file. Um, I've got a PNG file uh, stored here. Let me see if I can just find it. Do, 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 do. Oh, those are my videos. Um, code files, basics. So I've got a nice PNG here. It looks like a little shield from the game Rocket League. Uh, again, I'll, I'll walk you through this. This should be in the resources tab for this video, but you can go and get it from uh, the icon archive if you just search up, oops, if you just search here Rocket League or maybe just Rocket. Will that show it? Uh, right here, okay. And so again, remember, always check uh, commercial uses is allowed, uh, public license right here. So we can use this. Um, so that's going to look really good. And it's uh, a PNG file, though, this time. So I downloaded the PNG, and you can get whatever size that you want. So that's where I got this PNG file, okay? Awesome. I'll minimize that for right now. Um, so first... The first thing that we have to say is that you don't just put images onto a tkinter window. So that's not how it necessarily works. It's actually a multi-step process. First, you have to create the image. Then you have to put the image onto a label or a button or some other widget. And then you put that widget onto the screen. So let's first create our image. All right, so let's create our image. In order to do this with a PNG file, we can use the built-in photo image widget from tkinter. So I'm going to call uh, something, I'm going to call it my image, and I'm going to set this equal to tkinter.photo image. Now, uh, inside of here, all I have to do is set the file property, so file equals, and then give the file name that we want to open. So if I look here, right, it's in my same directory as my uh, my code right here, so it's just called shield. So I'm going to set this equal to shield.png, and so you want to include the file extension as well. So that creates the image. Now that I have the image created, I'll use that image for a label. So I'm going to put that image onto a label. Remember, labels can be used to display not only text to the screen, but images too. So I'm going to just say my label is equal to tkinter.label. And I'm going to put this on the root window. And I'm going to set the image property now. Instead of setting the text property, right, I'm going to set the image property. And I'm going to put my image, which is the image that I created. Now that that's done, the last thing that I need to do is just pack this onto the screen. So I'm going to say my label dot pack, and I'm going to pack it right onto the screen. And so let's check this out. Does this work? Hey, and look at that. It works perfect. So there's our label. Let's just see what would happen if I, instead of trying to pack the label, if I skip that step, right? If I just made the image and then tried to pack the image onto the screen, what's going to happen? See, it gives me an error. It says photo image object has no attribute pack. So I can't pack the image. I have to put the image onto some other widget and then pack or use grid to place that widget onto the screen. So my label, uh, we'll go back to my label. Uh, awesome. This is really great. Um, let's do the same thing for a button. Why not? Let's make a button too. So I've got 
the image, right? So I can put the uh, image on a button. So I'll say my button is equal to tkinter.button, so the button widget, and we'll call, place it on the root window, and we'll set the image property equal to uh, my image. And then we'll do my button.pack. So we can put it on a variety of widgets. And so now I should have a button here below, and look at what I do, and I can, I can press the button. So that's kind of nice. Really great. So, so this works really awesome um, with PNG files. However, it doesn't work that great with other file types like JPEGs. And so let's see what happens. And so I'm going to put a note here in our comment. We'll say not for JPEG. So I got to get a JPEG image. And so if I look here, I just have a picture of a cat. Um, you can arbitrarily just go and search cat JPEG um, if you want. That's what I did. And tons and tons of cat images come up. Just grab one, whatever one you want. It doesn't necessarily matter. Why cats? I don't know. I like cats. Um, even though sometimes I complain about my cat a lot. Um, but anyway, cats are cool. Um, so let's make the image. So we'll say cat image. So that's step one. So we'll do tkinter.photo image and we'll call the file equals and we'll put the file path. And what did I, I have mine named as cat. So I'm just gonna say cat.jpg, jpg. And then I'll make a label. So I'll call it cat label is equal to tkinter.photo label so it's a label widget I'm gonna put it in the root window and I'm gonna set the image property equal to the cat image alright so that's good and then let's pack this to the screen so I'll do cat label dot pack so it's the exact same thing I did with the PNG file I'm now doing with the JPEG and let's run this and if you look here I get an error the error, it says, couldn't recognize data in image file uh, cat.jpg. Um, so that's an issue. So to work with JPEGs, we have to actually do a little bit more work here. The first thing that we're going to do is import some libraries to help us deal with this uh, file type. Uh, if you don't have the pillow library installed, you're going to want to do that. So uh, open up a terminal or a prompt and you would type in pip install um, uh, pillow. I think, it, is it pillow? Let me just check. Pip install pillow. See, and it says requirements already satisfied. So I already have pillow installed. Um, you uh, could install it if you don't have it here and it will install it nicely for you. So now I'm going to import this. So I'm going to say, now I don't want to import the uh, entire library pillow, or sometimes we refer to it as P-I-L, pill. Um, I'm just going to import a, a portion of it that I want to use. Uh, pillow, or pill, is the Python imaging library, and it allows us to work with those other image types like JPEGs. So I'm going to say from pill, and it's all capital letters, P-I-L, import, we're going to import image TK, and image. And these two um, uh, right here are going to help us work with the different file types. So I'm going to comment these lines out. All right, I'm going to comment these lines out because they don't work. And so now we'll say uh, using pill for a JPEG. All right, so now let's try this. Uh, so to open the JPEG, instead of calling uh, tkinter.photo image, so I'm going to make cat image, instead of calling tkinter.photo image like I did here, I'm going to use image tk. So I'm going to do image uh, image tk.photo image. And inside of here, instead of calling um, like file, setting the file property, instead of setting the file property, uh, I am going to call image.open. So remember we used image tk, now we're going to use image inside of here. So I'm going to say image.open, and now inside of here I'm just going to pass the name of the file, cat.jpg. So that's how we're going to make our image now. Once I've made the image, I should be able to make my label. So I'll do cat label is equal to tkinter. Uh, dot label. So there's my label widget. We'll put it in the root window and we'll set the image equal to cat image. And now we'll pack the cat label onto the screen. So cat label dot pack. So note the difference here between these two methods, right? Um, 
it's just this first line that's different. Instead of referencing uh, the photo image uh, widget from tkinter, we're going to import it from pillow image tk, and we're going to use the image.open to open our file. And that's going to let us work with uh, JPEG. So if you look now, we have get that really nice looking uh, cat right there. It's one fine looking kitty. Works perfect, right? Uh, that's awesome. So I'm going to use image TK to handle the vast majority of image needs when working with tkinter uh, throughout the scope of this course. Um, now, one last thing I want to show you uh, in regards to images is how images work inside of functions. So let's move our code that creates our JPEG image uh, into a function and then call that function right before the main loop. So I'm just going to take this right here's our image uh, with JPEGs so I'm gonna cut and move this and I'm just gonna come up here right after my window and say define functions and I'll say def make image and I'm gonna paste all of that in okay so let me move that move that and move that always good habit I don't know just print an image a little doc string why not We'll, we'll keep up with it. Um, so now before I run my main loop down here, I'm going to call the make image function. So I'm just going to call my make image function, make image. So that should run and we should get a nice cat appearing and then our window should open up. So let's see if this works. Huh. So this doesn't work. The cat is gone. If you notice, right, our image does not load. But we also don't get an error here, right? Everything else works fine. Like I can press my button, I can close this. Everything else worked fine. There was no error. Um, the reason why, and this is going to be important. It's going to save us a lot of headache later on. If you try to display an image inside of a function like I've done here, uh, we have to make sure to keep a reference to the image by storing it in a global variable. So I have my image cat image right here. What I really need to do is keep a reference to that by saying global cat image. And so if I run this now, it should work. And let's just check. Hey, there's that kitty. He's back. Um, so why does this happen? Well, it's important to keep a reference as a global variable because when you return from the function, uh, and if the image is just stored in a, a variable that's local to the function, then that image is going to be cleaned or cleared by the garbage collector, even if it's being displayed by tkinter. Essentially, the image is just going to be removed. So a quick global call right here should fix our issue with, the, uh, with images, and it does, which is perfect. Um, okay, so I think at this point, I hope you feel like you have a good understanding of some of the basics with tkinter. Now we can build on these basics by creating some powerful and interesting full-fledged applications. Uh, and these applications will not only solidify our base knowledge, um, but they're also going to expand uh, and, and show us new widgets and new techniques and new ideas that we can use with tkinter and our Python uh, GUIs. So I hope you've enjoyed this course up to now. Uh, in our next video, we're going to start diving into making our first real uh, application. So I look forward to seeing you then. Thanks. Hello and welcome back to this free tutorial course on Python GUIs with tkinter. At this point you should have watched all seven of our instructional videos and will be well equipped to begin tackling the Hello World uh, GUI app. Uh, here is the finished product of the application. Um, I think I kind of showed it off already. We have an entry widget uh, and a button widget with some radio buttons inside of a frame. And then we have another frame down here which currently just hosts an image. Uh, I can type my name into the entry widget and click the submit button to have a label widget appear down here in what we all call an output frame. Depending upon the value of our radio button widget, the label is formatted differently. So when I have uppercase selected, it looks like we are formatting it in uppercase here. Uh, this is a great, again, this is a great test of your knowledge um, from what you learned in our previous seven instructional videos. Now, if I go to this video file here, I have included resources for this. So I have the icon and the image that I'm using, and I've also included finished code for you to work through. Uh, unfortunately, because I want to keep this course free uh, here on Udemy, I have to be under a two hour limit. And so this is why I'm not walking you through this application, but I still wanted to give it to you as a way for you to test your knowledge up to this point. So good luck to you and I will see you in the next video.